going to translate for us. Hola. <laughs> uh, we are drone racers. We spend pretty much 24 hours of our time flying quadcopters, drones, um, just for the joy of flight. Uh, pues básicamente somos los dos, yo voy a traducir, pero los dos somos eh, pilotos de drones de carreras y esto es lo que hacemos pues 24 horas al día, 7 días a la semana. Entonces les vamos a platicar un poquito de por qué y, y de cómo lo hacemos. Yeah, so the basis of it is, you know, we fly these toys that give us the freedom to fly. You, have, you can make that dream of flight come true. Nosotros, eh, I, I, I can barely hear you though. Okay. Yeah. So you, can you say that again? <laughs> so it's it's about that dream. You know, we all we all sit down and or sleep and dream of flying or being a bird, and drones for us lets us do that. You know, we can we can go up into the sky and be Superman. Los drones de carreras nos dan la oportunidad de, de, de volar, es algo que en lo que todos pensamos, lo que todos soñamos, queremos volar y estos pequeños dronecitos nos dan la oportunidad de hacerlo, ¿no? Y nos sentimos como, como pájaros cuando lo estamos haciendo. So, yeah, so what is a quadcopter? So, first of all, a quadcopter is, uh, mostly it's just a toy, it's a remote controlled helicopter uh, consisting of four propellers, uh, motors, and a flight controller for the drone is a multirotor. Basically, consists the majority in four motors, four propellers, and demás. Pero hay algunos que no lo mencionó en inglés, pero hay algunos que son de tres motores y hay otros también que son de seis. We also have hexes. So yeah, this is an example of one of my personal racing drone copters. Uh, it's pretty small. They're pretty robust. They're built to crash at upwards of 80 miles an hour. Estos son, este es uno de los que él utiliza para volar, de hecho este lo utiliza en competencias y la, la idea de, de, de que sean muy resistentes es para que aguanten todos los golpes, es uno muy muy ligerito y de hecho el diseño, ah porque se nos pasó a decirles, esta plática le iba a dar Zachary Tire pero se nos enfermó, entonces la estamos dando nosotros, pero él diseñó este frame, ¿no? entonces más o menos para que se den una idea de cuáles son los drones que ellos utilizan. And so most of us drone racers um, we don't go and buy them at the store. We actually spend the time researching and building all of these ourselves. You know, we go online and figure out what is best and what can we do to get the most performance and win these races that we all love. Eh, la mayoría de los pilotos de carreras no los compran los drones en la tienda, no los compran ya armados, sino que compran las partes, los arman, se toman el tiempo de investigar en internet cuáles son las partes que necesitan, cómo es que lo tienen que construir y cuáles son los mejores componentes para hacerlo. No, no solamente los componentes por separado, sino las combinaciones de estos. So now that we have the intro, I'm going to talk really quickly about what's going on behind us. So these videos are a GoPro attached to the top of this drone and it's showing you really the freedom that we get from flight. Los videos que estamos mostrando atrás son de la GoPro que va arriba del dron. No siempre tiene que ir una GoPro, pero la verdad la calidad del video es mucho mejor de lo que en realidad vemos con las cámaras pequeñitas. Pero esto es para mostrarles un poco de qué es lo que nosotros vemos, ¿no? So it's not necessarily the view that one of us will be seeing um, when we're flying. It's called FPV or first person view and you're, you're viewing the flight through a pair of goggles, which is being transmitted through the camera right here. So the HD video here is not at all what we're flying through. We're flying through an ultra low res. It's uh, originally started as a security camera and it was repurposed to be what we use now. Eh, lo, lo que está comentando es justo lo que les decía ahorita, ¿no? De la cámara de FPV es en realidad un video de VR de muy baja calidad. Tenemos mucha interferencia, generalmente estamos volando y vemos líneas y todo. Y la, el video en HD que estamos viendo ahorita, pues es el de la, el de la GoPro, que es súper bonito. Y en realidad no es lo que nosotros estamos, estamos viendo. Pero el tipo de vuelo que les mencionaba que nosotros hacemos es FPV, significa First Person View vista en primera persona, entonces en estos multirotores lo que tenemos es un transmisor pequeñito con una, una antena y esa antena le está mandando video a los gogles como los que trae aquí este muchacho alto, <laughs> raise your hand, there you go, como los gogles que trae él y la antenita que trae él, eso es lo que nosotros estamos utilizando para ver. So that's the thing is, we can have drones like this one that can fly in large open spaces around trees or buildings and whatnot, or 
you're going to see an example here very soon where they're really small. You know, you can become a bug or a bird. It's, it's really whatever you dream we can create. And everyone who builds drones has that option to do that. Todos los que, vuelan, los que construyen y vuelan estos drones tienen la oportunidad de sentir que, vuela, que, que están volando ¿no? y, y justo está mencionando cómo ahorita vamos a poder ver uno muy pequeñito porque hay algunos que son un poco más grandes como el que él tiene, ¿no? que en realidad sí son pequeños, pero hay otros todavía más pequeños como el que vamos ahorita a utilizar que también se vuela por vista en primera persona. ¿no? Yeah, so we'll move on to drone racing uh, as more of a sport. So, Drone racing is, we took this, this toy that we all love and we said, hey, let's go out and we, let's race each other. Let's see who's fastest, who can win. And that's kind of what you'll see in a moment right here is it's, you rate, we get to race each other in a whole other dimension than something like a car can do. Lo que él está mencionando es que nosotros lo que hacemos generalmente es correr en, en carreras, tal cual, drones de carreras como esto que estamos viendo aquí, entonces lo que estás tratando de hacer es seguir una pista, ya sea natural o que tú la, o que tú la, la vayas a recrear y, y lo que estás tratando de hacer es ir súper rápido, ¿no? Y esto so, es más o menos como se ve. Because we're flying now, it's not just, hey, let's go to a racetrack, hey, let's go to the street and race on cars, you know, it's, we can go to a mountain, you can go to a park, you can go almost anywhere and now the world is open to you to go fly and to go see, you know, how fast can you go? Can you beat your friend at racing? Sí, aquí se trata de, de ver qué tan rápido puedes ir, competir con otros amigos por diversión o, o en una carrera y que puedas visitar lugares como un parque, como una montaña, como un bosque y pues básicamente puedes volar en cualquier lado. Eh, hay algunos que no, pero, pero puedes volar casi en cualquier lado y el mundo se vuelve tu, tu pista de carreras, ¿no? So another huge aspect of drone racing for us is meeting all these amazing people. You know, it's, we get to travel around the world and we get to meet intelligent people who just love and are passionate about the same things that we are. It's, it's about a group of people that just love drones and love what they can do with them. And, you know, to see what we can all do together and work together to make drones, you know, our passion and it continues to be so. Um, está hablando de cómo la, las carreras de drones le han dado la oportunidad de viajar por todo el mundo y justo como lo está haciendo ahorita, ¿no? de que vino a México a dar una plática porque otros entusiastas de carreras de drones lo invitaron a venir. ¿no? Entonces ahorita tenemos a varias personas que vienen de, partes de diferentes partes del mundo y, y justo te da esa oportunidad de conocer a otros entusiastas en una comunidad que está dispuesta a estarse ayudando y hacer crecer este nuevo deporte. So on that note, a little bit about myself. I'm from uh, Colorado in America. And we're here in Mexico to join the Mexico racing team in the race that we have right behind us. It's, we traveled out here to, to race drones and to see, you know, to see our friends and to, to just love the sport and help grow the sport as it's kind of starting right now. Um, dice él que él viene de, hablando un poquito acerca de él personalmente, él viene de, de Colorado, él vive allá y justo vino a dar esta plática y no solamente a dar la plática que les está ofreciendo, sino que también aquí atrás tenemos una carrera de drones, el día de ayer tuvimos la clasificatoria, hace rato fueron las semifinales y a las 5 vamos a tener las, las finales, él es uno de los finalistas, he's one of the pilots that's in the finals y tenemos por ahí a otros, ¿no? <laughs> so a little bit about the history of drone racing, it's a uh... It started not too long ago. It's about a whole, it's one year, just about now is how long drone racing uh, as a sport has existed. And it's, you know, that's not, one year isn't very long for a sport. And it's, it's just starting to get traction. It's just getting to the point where we have people recognizing, oh, is that a drone race? Oh, is that a drone for racing? And it's, we're hoping that eventually we can make it to the point that it's, a worldwide phenomenon, you know, it's you go on TV and you get to watch drone racing on ESPN or whatnot. Está hablando de justo cuál es nuestra visión acerca de este deporte, 
y pues apenas tiene más o menos un año, un año es muy poquito para un deporte, o sea piensen en otros deportes que tienen 100 años existiendo y 100 años donde han estado discutiendo las reglas, regulaciones y demás y esta apenas tiene un año, entonces estamos en pañales, estamos viendo hacia dónde puede ir y estamos muy emocionados de poder ver cómo está creciendo, um, muy, muy, muy importante también ver los avances tecnológicos que ha habido en tan solo un año, aunque es muy poquito tiempo, los avances tecnológicos han sido muchísimos, ¿no? Este es, ah, este es otro video de ellos volando. Don't, yeah. Where is this? So this is a warehouse where a couple of my teammates work, and so that's another thing about drone racing is, as I was talking before, it's it's that opening up of just possibilities anywhere. We can go to something that looks like just a a crappy old warehouse, and we can say, hey, let's go fly, hey, let's go race there, and as you can see, it's. It's really intense, you know. It's it, it gives us the freedom to do anything we want, almost anywhere. Habla de la intensidad de volar. Eh, justo eh, dice que en cualquier lugar puedes volar, como esta como esta bodega, y puedes escoger cualquier espacio que haya afuera y utilizarlo como tu pista. Este video, pues pueden ver. Imagínense ir a esa velocidad en esos espacios tan chiquititos, la adrenalina que debes de estar sintiendo, ¿no? Y si se pueden dar la oportunidad de ir a ver la final al ratito. Van a poder ver cómo cuando están corriendo los muchachos, cómo es que se emocionan un montón y cuando se quitan los goggles es como si se hubieran bajado de un de un roller coaster, tal cual así. Es como si se hubieran bajado de Six Flags. Yeah. So, you know, one thing that we all try and do is to help other people get into drone racing. You know, all we want is more people to share the passion with, and you know, I'd I'd like to talk a little bit about how we can help all of you maybe become a part of our drone racing community. Ahora viene la parte interesante, les estuvo platicando de qué es lo que qué es lo que hacen, cuáles son las carreras de drones, cómo son los drones, pero aquí viene lo interesante, cómo podemos hacer que esta comunidad crezca y que seamos más porque el interés de todos los que estamos aquí es que esto se vuelva mucho más popular y aquí está la respuesta. Yeah, so this right here is a tiny little inductrix is what we call it. It's a it's kind of custom built and it's the whole point of it is hey anyone can pick it up and fly it it's it allows for any one of you could probably grab that controller and fly it right now within five minutes and it really lets you experience that joy of flight and to see the possibilities anyone even marty can fly it yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lo que está diciendo es que justo el propósito de este pequeño dron es que cualquiera lo pueda volar. En menos de cinco minutos tú puedes estar controlándolo perfectamente. Uh... <risa> no hace ningún daño, no te, no te lastiman las propelas. Puedes utilizar cualquier cosa como tu, como arcos, miren. <risa> y puedes hacer de, de, de un espacio muy pequeñito tu pista. Este modelo se llama Inductrix o Inductrix y lo que tiene la característica es que algún loquito por allá afuera decidió cambiarle los motores a unos mejores motores para que pudiera cargar la cámara FPV y el transmisor. Entonces, de pasar de un juguetito pequeñito que volabas a simple línea de vista, ahora ya tienes un juguete súper divertido que lo vuelas como lo está volando él, ¿no? So yeah, that's where we like to start people. We say, hey, if you want to get into drone racing, if you want to get into just flying drones in general, a great place to start is one of these small toys. It's it's really cheap. You won't really break it because it's so light. And it, it lets you experience what we all love firsthand. And and really, it's, it's pretty easy to get the hang of. And it's really just a joy. And everyone loves seeing the small ones fly around. So. Then once you you get proficient at flying something like that, then you can graduate to a larger drone where you know now you're going slightly faster than five miles an hour. It's more like 60 to 80 miles an hour with one of these, and it's yeah, it's a whole different beast. But a great place to start is something like that where it's slow, you can't hurt anybody, and you're just kind of floating around. Lo divertido y de por qué todo el mundo le gusta el, el, el Tiny Whoop, porque, bueno, algo, algo que no habíamos mencionado es que Jordan Temkin y Zachary Thayer, que está acá, son, los, eh, son parte de un equipo de, de drones de carreras muy, muy bueno en Colorado, que se llama Team Big Whoop, 
Y Chimbicup de repente lo que hacía era irse por un montón de competencias en el mundo y a donde sea que llegaban rentaban una casa y esa casa que rentaban la utilizaban como una pista completa de drones de carreras con los pequeños Inductrix. Entonces llegó un momento en el que se hizo tan famoso este, este modelo particular de, de dron que decidieron llamarlo el Tiny Whoop. Entonces, I'm explaining about Team Big Whoop and Tiny Whoop. Yeah, sure. Y, y Tiny Whoop es el resultado de, de pues un montón de, de, de horas volando adentro de una casa, ¿no? Y no puedes lastimar a nadie, en realidad no lo rompes muy, muy, muy fácil. Y aunque va muy despacito, es muy divertido a comparación de estos que alcanzan 100 kilómetros por hora sin ningún problema, ¿no? So yeah, and then once you get the hang of something like that, things like this are possible. This is almost this identical quad right here flying over two miles away in Moab, Utah. And that's the thing is it goes from just learning in your bedroom or your office to being able to fly two miles away up thousand foot cliffs in the middle of nowhere. And it's as long as you're ready and prepared to lose your quad possibly, it's, you know, the possibilities are just endless. Las posibilidades de volar en FPV son infinitas. Este es un, un vuelo que se hizo a dos millas de distancia. How, how long was the range of this, uh, of this flight? Like, how long did you go? Like from About two miles. Two miles? Yeah. Dos millas más o menos de donde estaba el parado hacia donde llevó el, el dron. Y todo este tiempo estás viendo lo que el dron está viendo. Entonces, si tú no tuvieras FPV, no podrías estar disfrutando de vuelos como este. Que ese es justo la... la la, la cosa maravillosa de poder volar en FPV, no puedes tener la oportunidad de, de surcar los aires, de, de ver landscapes hermosos, paisajes increíbles y esto es lo que te lo permite, ¿no? entonces pasaste de simplemente volar un juguete pequeñito adentro de tu casa a ya estar yéndote a distancias súper, súper largas a disfrutar de estas cosas, ¿no? So I'm going to go into a little bit about, you know, the, the the aspects of what goes into flying something like this. And it's, it's actually really simple electronically. There's not all that much to it. And that's a major reason of why we love drones compared to something like an aircraft. So on an airplane with wings, you have airfoils and you have control surfaces that add a lot of engineering involved, right? But something like this is, there's no real aerodynamics. We are brute forcing flight all we're using are motors and with uh, modern technology like uh, cell phones, it allowed us to create flight controllers that, that now are able to, to stabilize flight more than it ever has been able to do before. Aquí la, la diferencia con los multirotores y la razón de por qué nos gustan tanto comparados con, con los aviones es que la tecnología de un avión tiene un montón de problemas que resolver como superficies de control, cuando tienes turbulencias. Entonces sí, un avión te da mucho más tiempo de vuelo, pero también tienes muchos problemas de estabilidad dependiendo de lo que tú quieras hacer. ¿no? Entonces la precisión del vuelo es mucho mayor cuando tienes un multirotor. Estos modelos son muy sencillos, tienes motores, tienes una controladora de vuelo, pero la magia viene de que las controladoras de vuelo están diseñadas para poder hacer vuelos muy, muy precisos y cambiar un montón de cuestiones de la configuración del vuelo. Entonces, al final, es esta pequeña computadora la que está haciendo que tengas la capacidad de volar por un montón de lugares con mucha estabilidad y mucha fluidez. Y estas controladoras de vuelo vienen de, de, de celulares, vienen de multiwi. Hay quien desarrolló, por ejemplo, la NACE 32, que viene de la controladora de, de multiwi tal cual, de 8 bits, Nada más que la hicieron de 32 bits y la adecuaron para, para multirotores, ¿no? So yeah, there's really only like five major components. There's the propellers, the motors, the ESCs, which are the speed controllers for the motor. So they tell the motor, you know, what, what do you do? Hey, spin this fast, spin that fast. And then there's the flight controller. So it's really just a propeller, a motor, an ESC, and a flight controller. You know, there's only four or five major parts as well as the battery and you have yourself a drone. Well, times four because there's four arms. But, you know, there's no moving parts, there's no mechanical uh, arms or anything that you have to deal with building. It's just no electronics. Servos. Yeah, it's just you solder a few parts together and then you have a, a flying object. 
nos habla de que los componentes en realidad son, son muy sencillos, eh, tienes, tienes nada más que soldarlos, no tienes en realidad ningún, ningún sistema mecánico ni nada así, no tienes servos como en los aviones, pero, pero es en realidad muy, muy fácil, ¿no? el formato es muy sencillo en sí. Después vamos a hablar un poquito más de los tipos de, de, de drones que hay, pero básicamente ese es el sistema, ¿no? Y, uh, can I mention this real quick, so they can see this? Oh, yeah. Les voy a pasar un control para que vayan viendo lo que él está viendo mientras vuela. Si se lo pueden ir pasando para que lo vayan viendo. So, and then another aspect of learning to build, at least for me, was... I never really built or soldered or worked with ele electronics all that much when I was growing up, but drones helped teach that. It was, it was getting into drones that helped me learn to solder and learn electronics and learn all these, these things that may have I just passed up if it wasn't for drones. So in that point, it's, you know, if children want to start learning how to fly or learning drones, it's it also teaches them how to solder and how to how to work with electronics. Él está hablando de su experiencia personal, pero en este caso yo también la comparto con él. Antes de, de los drones, yo no sabía soldar, no sabía absolutamente nada de electrónica. En cuanto a herramientas de trabajo, pues tampoco era como que las usaba mucho, pero además de la, de la diversión que te da de volar un dron, también te enseña a utilizar este tipo de herramientas, te enseña a reparar, te enseña a construir y entiendes también cómo funciona el sistema completo, porque para poder volarlo, pues tienes que entender qué es lo que hay detrás, ¿no? Porque se descomponen un montón, lo tienes que estar reparando todo el tiempo. So, then of course. You know, we're not all about racing. It's also a flying camera platform. It allows us to follow high-speed objects from perspective that we've never really seen before. It, it lets us follow go-karts, you know, right behind it in third-person view, similar to a video game, but, you know, this is in real life. It's, it's an it's a angle that we've never really been able to capture all too easily before. Me gusta mucho la comparación que hace Jordan, porque es muy cierto. Esto es un videojuego de la vida real. Si hay, si hay, hay gamers aquí, hay gente que, se, que le gusten los juegos, los videojuegos, ¿sí? Esto es, un, esto es un videojuego de la vida real. Ah, ¡Yo! <risa> esto es un videojuego de la vida real totalmente. Entonces, um, lo, que, lo que él está contándoles es que no, son, no nada más estamos aquí para, para correr drones de carreras en formato carrera, ¿no? También es por diversión, también es irte a una pista de go-karts, irte a perseguir carritos y, y al final disfrutar de cualquier lugar en donde estés volando, ¿no? And so I guess I'll go on to, I'm not really sure where this is going, but design concepts of uh, a drone. And so the idea is to keep it simple. It's, you don't need mechanical moving parts like an airplane. You don't need gears. You don't need servos. It's just, you can make a quadcopter frame out of two sticks of wood glued together. It's really, there's not much to it other than electronics. El, el, el diseño básico, ahora les voy a platicar de, de esto, ¿no? Justo del diseño. Porque el que iba a dar originalmente la plática, que está sentado aquí entre el público, <ríe> porque se siente un poquito mal, pero el que iba a dar originalmente la plática diseñó un frame, ¿no? Entonces vamos a hablar un poquito de, 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 del diseño de estos. Y justo habla de cómo con dos simples eh, palos puedes hacer un, un multirotor. O sea, en realidad es muy, muy básico el diseño que se utiliza. So because of simplicity, it allows for just innovation left and right, you know, anyone can go to their garage or to their friend's house in the hardware store and they can find parts to build any kind of quad design that they ever wanted, you know, you, if you think of it, you can just go and build it because it's so simple. Cualquier persona que quiera construir uno de estos se puede ir a la tienda donde, donde vendan, eh, ¿cómo se dice? Hardware store, ferretería. <laughs> a cualquier ferretería y comprarse un montón de piececitas y demás y empezar a armar uno por sí, por sí mismo. Entonces, en realidad, cualquier persona se puede meter en esto. Como les mencionábamos ahorita, nosotros no sabíamos soldar ni cosas así, ahora lo hacemos. Entonces, esto está puesto para que cualquiera lo haga. So, and then from there, you can move on to more advanced concepts like using carbon fiber, uh, stronger materials because we're moving so quickly through the air, you know, we're going upwards of 60 to 80 miles an hour. When you crash, it crashes and things break. So carbon fiber is pretty much the major working tool and, and material that most drone builders use just because it allows 
this strength that isn't really much achievable with other materials. Si, si bien cualquiera puede puede construir un un dron de 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 este tipo, eh, conforme vamos avanzando y vamos empezando a volar más rápido, pues también corremos el riesgo de estrellarnos. Entonces al final estamos los que hacemos esto estamos en la búsqueda de materiales que sean mucho más resistentes y la fibra de carbono es la que se está utilizando para para los frames que son justo el cuerpo del del, del multirotor que usamos. Y, y esto aplica también para el resto, ¿no? Para la electrónica también. So yeah, just just going back to it, you know, it's if you look at this, it's there's not all much going on. It's just an X. It's just two bars glued together by bolts. It's nothing. There's nothing really all that special about it. And this is why we love trying to teach people drones. Is Anyone can get into it. You can do a little bit of research, and you can start building your own drone within a day or two. En en un día o dos puedes aprender a a construir uno de estos porque en realidad si se fijan es un diseño muy sencillo. Tienes, o sea, son cuatro brazos unidos al centro. Sí, son sí cuatro brazos unidos al centro por 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 screws, ¿no? Pues al final en realidad no es nada complicado. Cualquiera lo puede armar, cualquiera lo puede lo puede comenzar a utilizar. So building it might be easy, but learning to pilot well is a whole other project. So it might be easy to pick up the little one and start flying right away, but to get to the point that you're proficient at racing, you know, it's, it's all of us racers are constantly working to get to the point where, you know, we're the fastest on the track and we're the best. And, and that's really, it's, it's like any other sport, you know, you have to take the time to practice and really dedicate your time to, to becoming better. Habla de cómo, pues, si bien cualquiera puede construir uno, ya cuando empiezas a hablar de los de las habilidades como piloto, ya es otro tema. O sea, eso sí ya es mucho más complicado. Eh, a diferencia de los drones normales que se utilizan para fotografía aérea, que tienen un montón de instrumentos que te sirven para estabilizar el vuelo y, por ejemplo, dependes de un GPS o cosas así. En este caso, estás completamente volando en manual, ¿no? Entonces es mucho más complicado volar estos y como como alguien que ya se dedica a esto empiezas a empujar mucho más el tipo de material que estás utilizando y también tus mismas habilidades como piloto. And that's where the great community comes in, you know, it's we all want to help each other get better. It's not just uh, I'm better than you, yada yada. It's we we can really push each other and and push the the envelope to where you know, we're saying, wow, did you see that person online do, do that trick or that thing? And, and that's a huge part of the community is sharing footage and sharing your skills with other people so that we can all kind of grow as a sport together. Parte de la pasión de esto es mejorar como pilotos y una de las maneras en que lo haces es en empujar a que los demás también, también crezcan. Y hay mucho dentro de la comunidad de drones de carreras el, el hecho de compartir tus videos, de hacer tus vuelos, grabarlos y subirlos en internet y que la gente empiece a comentar, que la gente empiece a decir, mira, viste lo que hizo esa otra persona que está en el otro lado del mundo y que entre todos empiecen a mejorar, aunque ni siquiera estés físicamente en el mismo lugar, ¿no? And so the internet plays a major role in, you know, all of our abilities to share this this with each other. It's because it's not just one sport in one region, it's this universal language of flight where we all love to fly and we all love to share that and that's all that really is necessary to to appreciate each other's uh, abilities of flying. What was that that you said? Universal what? Universal language of flight. Oh my God, that's so pretty. <laughs> el, el lenguaje universal del vuelo, qué bonito. That's such a beautiful phrase. Um, el, el lenguaje universal del vuelo, que eso lo hablan todos, ¿no? Entonces hay gente en todo el mundo haciendo esto y al final es el, el, el la pasión y el amor por hacerlo y por compartirlo, lo que hace que esto esté creciendo desmesuradamente. And so you know, and then we look to the future of like, where is drone racing going? Where do we want it to go? And right now, because of the infancy of the sport, you know, it's only been one year since it started. Us as a community have the ability to push this sport wherever we really want it to go. It's, we have the freedom to say, hey, we want the sport to be like this or like that. And, and it's really things like this race back here where Angela's 
saying, oh, let's do a race indoors with all these cool people and show everybody what's happening. It's she's helping push, you know, what is drone racing. And that's it's we're all just working together to, to build a sport that we love and we want it to grow in the future. Estaba hablando de mí, entonces yo voy a hablar de él. <laughs> He was talking about me, so now I'm going to talk about him. <laughs> okay, lo que estaba diciendo él es que um, ahorita estamos justo en el momento en el que esto está empezando y tenemos la, 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 está en nuestras manos el decidir hacia dónde va a ir este deporte. Nosotros estamos ahorita decidiendo con cada carrera que hacemos, con cada evento que montamos, con cada video que subimos a YouTube, estamos decidiendo hacia dónde queremos que esto vaya. Y bueno, él hablaba de cómo los esfuerzos de la gente en la comunidad están justo haciendo que, que, que esto se dirija hacia dónde va. Yo lo veo eh, eh, en cuanto a ellos como equipo, que son de, de pues uno de los mejores equipos que hay ahorita en el mundo, no solamente porque son muy buenos, sino porque tienen esta cualidad de poder ir a muchos lugares en el mundo y promover este deporte, sobre todo con estos drones chiquititos, ¿no? que lo vuelven súper accesible para la gente y se divierten un montón haciéndolo, entonces al final es la pasión y el amor por lo que, por lo que están haciendo, que hace que la gente cuando los ve diga, hey, yo también quiero participar en eso, yo quiero un poquito de esa felicidad que me está dando y se vuelve adictivo, entonces al final no es tan difícil que la gente se una a esto porque es súper adictivo, porque es súper divertido. So then how do we integrate this into the global culture, you know, how is it that we create a sport that says, you know, you go on TV and you go, oh, I love that pilot or I love that pilot or, you know, it's that racetrack and how do we get to a point where it's, it's just as common in the household as F1 racing or bike racing or, or soccer. It's, you know, where, how do you create a sport? You know, we've never, at least in my life, ever experienced the creation of a sport from the ground up. And that's, it's really what we're working towards is how do you start from something that might have not existed three or four years ago to a sport that's globally recognized? Estamos eh, justo pasando por eso, ¿no? de, de, de estar creando un deporte que no existía hace tres años a un deporte que está siendo reconocido alrededor del mundo. Entonces estamos justo en esa etapa en la que, en la que estamos decidiendo cómo, cómo se le va a dar forma a este nuevo deporte. So right now we're working towards getting companies and whatnot to help sponsor the growth of the sport. Uh, so far it's been a pretty grassroots. It's, it's us pilots racing just because we love to it's really nothing more than that but for it to become professional to the point that you might be watching it on your television you know we have to have backing of companies as sponsorships or you know some way of bringing a cash flow into drone racing and it's more it has to become more than just backyard with friends para poder hacer de este deporte un deporte realmente profesional, que la gente se le pague por hacer esto y que no sea nada más como ha sido hasta ahora, que es un montón de amigos en el patio trasero de una casa armando la pista nada más por hacerlo, pero para que realmente se vuelva profesional tienen que entrar también marcas grandes para apoyar este deporte y es justo en lo que se está, en lo que se está ahorita, buscando ese, ese patrocinio de parte de marcas que tienen el dinero para poder hacer de este deporte algo profesional. So yeah, recently we've been talking to people like Mountain Dew are finally getting in, and Pepsi Company, they're, they're getting into drone racing. It's, it's really turned into a whole nother level of, you know, there's all these people trying to push it just like us, and, and we're really dreaming of the future. We're dreaming of what, you know, what if we do have professional drone racing? What is that going to be like? And that's the thing is, we don't really know. We are trying to work with companies and other people and the audience, you know, what does everyone want to see when it comes to drone racing? What is, what would make you, make you want to watch drone racing? And that's really a question that we haven't really been able to answer yet is, is how do we engage an audience in this thing that we have, we all have a passion for? Una de las empresas que ya empezó a, a meter dinero en esto es Mountain Dew, la bebida de, de Pepsi. Y, y están no solamente ellos, sino los mismos, los mismos pilotos, los mismos organizadores de eventos, las marcas que están metiendo dinero, están viendo hacia dónde se tiene que dirigir el formato del deporte para poder atraer a la audiencia 
y que realmente le demos a la audiencia lo que quieren. Entonces, esta es una pregunta que todavía no hemos podido responder. ¿Qué es lo que la gente quiere ver? ¿Y cómo podemos hacer atractivo este deporte para que la gente esté interesada en estar ahí como audiencia también? So, from what we understand about other sports, it's people love to do it at home. It's people who love soccer go home and they play soccer with their friends and they, they have their favorite athletes and, you know, everyone plays it on their own time and then they go and watch the professionals and we really think that drone racing has to make the same kind of steps where it's not just us in our backyard flying, it has to be everybody likes to fly drones and then we move on to a point where everyone's flying drones and then we also have the professional circuit. Aquí la, la, la clave es volverlo como, como el fútbol, que alguien que le gusta el fútbol tiene a sus jugadores preferidos, va a su casa y patea el balón atrás de, de, en su patio, ¿no? Entonces todo el mundo tiene la posibilidad de poder ver como audiencia este deporte, pero también de participar en él. Entonces, ¿cómo hacemos que, que las carreras de drones o FPV Racing se vuelva algo que también la gente pueda practicar de manera mucho más fácil? Porque no se trata nada más de nosotros como pilotos que ya estamos aquí, sino de cómo hacer para que todo el mundo se integre en esta, en esta comunidad. So yeah, that's, that's the future that we all dream of, is drone racing professionally. And we haven't really got much further than that. But um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions or anything, you're welcome to ask now and we'll try our best to answer them. Eh, pues lo, lo que él dice es que eh, el, el sueño de todos es poder ser pilotos profesionales de drones. Yo sé varios de aquí que están sentaditos, como este muchacho de aquí, como otro que veo por allá, <ríe> que cualquiera de ellos, si en, en cualquier momento le dijeran ahorita te pago para que hagas esto el resto de tus días, sin ningún titubeo lo harían. Entonces hay que ver cómo poder llegar a ese punto y ahora viene el tiempo de preguntas y respuestas. Questions, right? Yeah. Okay. Preguntas y respuestas. <ríe> Hi. Um, with the new technologies, is it worth uh, 3D printing the frame, or is it better to build it uh, with other, um, with other based uh, frames? Okay. So yeah, I that's actually how I started flying drones was 3D printing. I found out that oh hey, drones existed. I could actually print one because at the time I had a 3D printer of my own. So I printed a frame. I started building it, I kind of fell in love with flight and it turned into this point where you break it all the time. 3D printing is great for prototyping and for learning what something looks like in real life, but in all honesty, as a real mechanical material, it's not all that great. It breaks very easily and when you crash at 60 to 80 miles an hour, there's only so much a 3D printed part can hold up, right? So that's why a lot of drones you'll see are built of carbon fiber. It's relatively cheap. Um, we get them mostly all manufactured in China. And 3D printing is, we use it for prototyping and for seeing, you know, like, oh, will this work, will that work? But we've never really found a good material where it's, a perfect fit for the full frame itself. It's great as accessories. If you see the top part of my quad, it has a GoPro mount that's 3D printed, but the structure of the quad generally, you want to be carbon fiber. Um, eh, él, él preguntaba que si eh, es, es buena idea hacer en, en impresión 3D los frames y él pues se lo resumo ¿no? rapidísimo, pues no, no el material que se usa en, en, en las impresoras 3D no es lo suficientemente resistente como para aguantar eh, golpes de en 60 millas por hora o más o menos 100 kilómetros por hora, entonces ahorita se están haciendo casi todos en China o se están cortando de manera muy casera pero es fibra de carbono la que se utiliza y se está buscando mejorar la calidad de ella para que aguante la mayor cantidad de golpes posibles. Any yeah. other questions? Uh, uh, regarding the future of the sport, uh, you were uh, making a comparison with soccer. Uh, how can you explain, like uh, F1, that it's not a sport that everybody can do on, in their backyard, but it moves a, a really big a bunch of money and it has so many fans in the world? Well, so that's one thing that we're trying to work on is. Back four years ago, before, or a little more than that, you know, before smartphones existed, these microchips were really expensive and hard to come by. And in the past few years, because of cell phones and because of smartphones, all these things like accelerometers and gyroscopes have become so much cheaper. And so something that 
five years ago I would not have been able to afford has become much cheaper since then. So we're hoping, you know, because of the rise of other technologies, eventually it will get to a point where it will be cheap. You will be able to go out and maybe purchase a drone or build a drone for, for a fraction of what it costs now. And then everyone will be a part of it. And it's really, we see every month it gets cheaper and cheaper. It's really fast the amount that the technology is growing. And we really, you know, it very soon, probably in the next year, it will be a point where it's, it's affordable for everybody. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, have you heard of this city as the new Silicon Valley? No, I haven't. This is actually my first time here. Would you believe that in the future uh, there will exist a drone-making Mexican brand? Do you think there's a yeah, possibility? I mean, there's, that's the thing is because anyone can go and design a drone that they like, it's, we designed this like Zach over there, he designed it in his own home. He went, he learned how to 3D model and then cut it out on a CNC in the garage. You know, it's, it's so easy to do in terms of design that, that it's really possible. And I'm sure there are a bunch of, of companies in Mexico already who are designing drones and building drones. Right there, see, there's one right there. He's already doing it, so it's exactly, so it's, that's the thing is because it's so easy to do in a garage, if you want to learn how to do it, it's very easy to pick up. Hi, um, I would like to know what would be like the cost, like for example, for the mini drone? Uh huh. And, yeah. So I only know prices in uh, US dollars, but that's approximately $100 right there. Um, and then the thing is, it's really a kind of, uh, a hobby where you can spend as much as you want. You can build goggles that only cost twenty or thirty dollars U.S. Um, and you can, you know, spends up or worth up thousands of dollars if you'd really like. But it's kind of like a car. You know, you can go and buy a cheap one, or you can get a nice, expensive one. Yeah. For example, like buying that one in this specific. Like, yeah. What would be the cost for that one if so, I want to buy that one? So that one right there would cost about a hundred dollars U.S. With the goggles. Without the goggles. So the goggles would cost another 30 and the transmitter's another 30-ish. So you could get up and flying for roughly $150 US, yeah. Is there a place that I can buy over here? Um, so I'm not really sure of any stores in Mexico that sell it, but online on it's called the, yeah, on eBay, it's called the right. Blade Inductrix. Okay. And then you can get a little camera module called a Quantum micro cam yep. or the FX 797 and so that's really all it is is it's a toy bot drone that you you know there's plenty of vendors selling those kind of toys around here and then we took the little camera module and just stuck it on top so that's the thing is you can be as creative as you want you can say hey look at this cool toy I'm gonna put a camera on it you can do it to a car you know you can take a toy car and stick it on there you can do it to your real car you can stick it on your real car and a friend could ride along there it's because of FPV, we really are opened up to do almost anything we want. Thanks. Yeah. In all the events you have gone, with, uh -huh. which one is the biggest or the coolest the biggest? Uh, race event? Okay. So that's kind of a hard question to answer. So. A year ago was in July was Drone Nationals in Sacramento, California, and that was like the first big race. A few of these pilots here were there with us, and it was approximately 120 pilots. It was, you know, there haven't really been much races that are that many pilots. The thing is, it's not necessarily how many people there are racing in it or whatnot. It's because it's still growing, there isn't really a, the biggest race. There was a race in Dubai recently that had a, a quarter million dollar U.S. prize. And, you know, if you, in terms of prize money, that was obviously the biggest because only Dubai has that kind of cash. What's that? Uh, um, my question is going um, about infrastructure and the creation of events. Uh, um, the infrastructure? 
uh, the creation infrastructure is the creation of events I don't know uh, all the all the races are in the nature or there are uh, trams or things like that yes so in terms of I mean building them it's it's there's not much to it you know right here you see it's just some wooden gates so you can do it on the cheap and that's the thing is we we fly with pool noodles so it's it's a dollar pool noodle that we bought at the store and that's what we fly through so these big races put on a show you know you can have fireworks and whatnot but it's still just a drone race and we'll really fly anything that's the thing is we don't care if it's flying you know in some massive city or with a big prize or lights and stuff it's all we really want to do is fly and so that's why things like this is it's a blast because we're just flying on a track with our friends it's that's really the key point for us right now is just having fun Is there a huge difference between this model that you build yourself and between the Chinese model, like the CX-11 that uh, some yeah. weeks ago was created and has Wi-Fi, you can fly with your phone and that stuff? Yeah. Is that uh, any huge difference or something like that? Yeah, so I would definitely say there's a major difference between the ones that you buy and fly with your phone. So the thing with the ones on your phone using Wi-Fi is there's a major latency issue. So you say go forward and it takes a couple seconds for it to start going forward, where when you're using a transmitter with radio, it's almost instant. So you are one-to-one -one with, it's, it's like trying to drive a car by telling your friend to turn left or right. You know, it's gonna take them a second to do it. And, and that's what the phone, the issue with the ones that use your phone is. And the ones that you buy in China and whatnot. So the thing is, all these parts are from China. It's, it's just kind of part of the global market, right? So it's, it's just cheap to get that manufactured there. And it, the ones that you buy pre-built are always going to be slower and less responsive than a high-performance machine. So it's, yeah, if you want to have a racing drone that, that really pushes the limits, you're going to have to learn and build it yourself. But it's, it might sound scary, but it's, once you learn, and take the time to research, it's, it's, it's very simple, yeah. Well, personally talking, um, how can I start to build a drone by, by myself? Sure. You know, any suggestions that you yeah. have? Or? So I think the best way to do it is go talk to other people who fly drones. So there's a community in Mexico here called Mexico FPV Racing, FPV Racing Mexico. And it's, you know, it's a group of people who love to fly drones and race them. So I, first of all, I would go and talk to them and say, hey, you know, what have you tried? So the thing is, all of these people have tried everything. You know, they've bought this and bought that and this didn't work and that didn't work. And they've, they've found something that finally does work. And so that's, that's a major part of talking to people is you don't want to make the same mistakes and waste the same money that they have already done. So a big part of it's talking, and then it's just researching online. You know, I learn how to build these through YouTube videos. It's really just, I mean, that's how most of us learn how to do a lot of things nowadays, right? So it's, it's just YouTube videos and research and, and talking to other people who are, who are doing it right now. Yeah. We got time for one more. Can't. So we'll do we'll do a real question. Any any more questions there? Yeah. So if you want to come and watch, we have finals happening. I think very soon at five o'clock, um, right behind us on the racetrack. Uh, it's going to be the four fastest people that were here today. Yeah. So come out and watch, and I hope you guys have a good time. <laughs>